Welcome to Channel 18 News. I'm Jim Rogers. 17 dogs were seized by Hopkins County Sheriff's Corporal Kobe Hume and the SPCA of Texas Thursday morning in the Como area. The 12 adult dogs and five puppies were transferred and will be housed in the SPCA of Texas storage facility temporarily until a more permanent arrangement is made. Charges of cruel confinement of the animals are pending. No arrest has been made. Hume, who's the newly assigned as animal cruelty investigator for the Hopkins County Sheriff's Department, and another officer observed the cruel confinement of the 17 dogs Wednesday while assisting Child Protective Services remove a child from the Como location. Hume stated that he and the other officer observed firsthand the situation and secured a cruel confinement warrant for the seizure. Hume said if anyone in Hopkins County notes what they suspect to be animal cruelty, they may now call the sheriff's office. He will be investigating all reports made. He noted that before, residents usually contacted the SPCA, but now there's a local investigator and all should contact the sheriff's office. Hopkins County law enforcement officers continue their search for Michael Scott Ross, age 55, of Dyke. Ross is wanted on charges of continuous sexual assault of a child less than 14 years of age. Ross is a white male, 6 foot 1 inches, 190 pounds, with brown hair, brown eyes, wears glasses, has tattoos on his arms, legs, back, and abdomen. Ross was indicted by Hopkins County Grand Jury in January of this year. The sexual abuse began in June 2014 and continued into February 2015. The child made an outcry to her grandmother and a child advocate certified investigator. Ross has ties to Hopkins, Hunt, and Bowie counties. Anyone with information should contact Lake Country Crime Stoppers at 903-885-2020 or the Hopkins County Sheriff's Office at 903-438-4040. Persons with information that leads to an arrest could receive up to $1,000 in reward. Officers ask that you not attempt to apprehend Ross on your own. A trip to Emory Wednesday paid dividends as Hopkins County and criminal investigator Dennis Finley recovered a Browning high-powered rifle and scope, located additional rings, necklaces, charm pendants, and heard the confession of Kenneth Henson to burglarizing a residence. He also garnered the name of two additional suspects in the case. Items already recovered in the burglary from the Arbela area prior to yesterday included three items, a wedding ring, a tennis bracelet, and a Nikon camera. Now, Finley will travel to Mineola today to Ponderosa Pond to recover the items taken yesterday following Henson's confession. Finley said these items are not all that was stolen, but are the more expensive items taken. Additional weapons were stolen along with knives and other jewelry. Henson, a female companion, Sarah Nicole, Sarah Nicole Barker, whom we told you about yesterday, and two others had kept the residents under surveillance for a few days, according to Henson's confession to Finley. Finley said the four had timed the trips of the family moving into the new house and observed items being moved. They chose a time to burglarize the residence when the residents were away as for the additional items to be moved into their new home. Finley warns that in this day and time, homeowners need to be aware of their surroundings. He said if any one sees an auto parked nearby and persons or persons are in the vehicle, one should get a tag number and description of the vehicle, call the sheriff's office, and report it. Deputies will check out the call. He said there may be a legitimate reason for the auto and people to be there, but it may not be legitimate. Wednesday afternoon, 8th Judicial District Court Juan Antonio Alvarez Flores pled guilty to manufacturing delivery of a controlled substance, methamphetamine, less than one gram, excuse me, more than one gram, less than four grams, in a drug-free zone. He was sentenced to three years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. He was arrested and charged with felony two offense in January of this year. It was his first arrest in three years. From 08 to 2013, he had been in and out of Hopkins County Jail on traffic violations and two charges of possession of marijuana less than two ounces. Walter Lee Robertson, age 66, was sentenced to five years in the TDC following a plea bargain Wednesday afternoon in 8th Judicial District Court. The agreement sends Robertson to prison for attempted, robber, uh, attempted arson. In 06, Robertson received a deferred probation for second-degree felony arson. According to Hopkins County Sheriff's records, Robertson had written to his half-sister telling her that she'd been talking about him and she'd better watch out. 
The half-sister lived in a residence on County Road 2321, the house that was burned. The house was owned by a local dairyman. Robertson was arrested in March of 05 for the third time arson offense. He was sentenced in 06, but violated his parole in 08 for the first time. He's now residing in Hopkins County Jail, awaiting transportation to TDJC. Veronica Arnold, who's known as Ms. Arnold to her former math students, is now Director of Food Services for Sulphur Springs ISD. And before Ricky Elliott's retirement after 41 years with the Food Service Department, Veronica was once her assistant. And after teaching 5th and 8th grade math for several years, she is back making sure students eat well. Tell us sort of what your day goes like and, and your week goes like. Okay, we have uh, we are serving students Monday through Thursday, and we are serving summer school students they come in and we have YMCA students that come in and then we serve and we serve just any student who wants to come in any child okay. who wants to come in 18 years and under okay. and we serve breakfast from 745 to 830 and then lunch from 1045 to 1230 hmm. and if students or children are coming in to visit their grandparents their aunts and uncles they can come to Sulphur Springs Elementary School and um, just go into our cafeteria and there's no cost, there's no fee, there's no application. You just go in and get your meal. Isn't and that a wonderful it way? It absolutely is. And we're hoping that we continue to serve more students. Our numbers have been up this summer. Currently, we're having about 150 students for lunch, which is wonderful. Okay. And then for breakfast, about 100 students. Okay. So we just want to continue to increase our numbers. So you mentioned the three different groups of youngsters that come, <clears throat> those out in the community, just Correct. whoever hears mm -hmm. about this and wants to. And then the summer school students, which would be like middle and high school? Well, we students? are some of the elementary students, we don't right now have middle school or high school students coming in. Okay. But some of the students that are required to go to summer school, they, they are having their summer school at Sulphur Springs okay. Elementary. Okay. So they have easy access for breakfast and lunch. Wonderful. And then YMCA. Tell us about how we got YMCA here. We have um, our, our assistant, assistant superintendent, Kristen Monk, has been pop, um, partnering with YMCA and so that we can serve more students. And so YMCA is coming in to have their program also serviced at Sulphur Springs Elementary School. And so again, easy access for breakfast and lunch okay. and bringing in more students. And really, this may be out of your realm, but is this sort of an offshoot from our uh, former Boys and Girls Club? I'm not sure on that. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure but on that. it's a wonderful program yes. and that youngsters in Hopkins and Hunt County That's kind correct. of partner together. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Hunt County, you're, you have history there. I do. I do. I went to school in Quinlan ISD and graduated from Quinlan. I worked in Greenville, so we kind of lived right in the middle of a little town called Cash. And okay. so, yes, that's where we lived. And I lived there for most of my life there. And so uh, we moved out here to Sulphur Springs in 2002. And again, I'm going to school and finished school. And I taught fifth grade and eighth grade math. And then still keeping in touch with Ricky Elliott and knowing I still had a a, a real liking for the summer for the food program mm -hmm. and so when I found out she was retiring I, I went and talked to her and applied for the position and was able to get there. Well you are a familiar face as a teacher. Yes. Over yes. at Travis. At um Douglas. A Douglas. Douglas and middle school. Okay, Douglas yes. and middle school. Fifth and eighth grade now. That's right. And let's say um, uh, what we can about the food preparation, and I know as kids when we were going through our lunch line to get our food, there were the lunch ladies. Yes. And maybe we knew them by name or maybe we didn't, but they're always present, always smiling and supportive. Yes. And so you have some uh, staff there. We do. We have three staff members right now working at our Sulphur Springs Elementary Campus for the Summer Food Program. And we have a gentleman there to this time. His name is Kevin Thomason. Okay. We have Jacqueline Jackson there, and we have Donna Gamble working at our Summer summer food program. Wonderful. Yes. Okay, so they're helping to turn out meals for up to 150, 160. Yes, and, and again, we just want to continue to feed students
students and children that come in, and it's a wonderful program. We have been able to um, get another program also combined with this, and it's, it's all through USDA. So we are bringing in fresh fruits and vegetables. So today, the students for lunch will have fresh corn on the cob, and that's just something new that we haven't had, so I, I think it'll be good for them. Well, that brings me to ask, how do you set menus? How do you project them? Because we have June and July menus already printed. That's correct. We have um, we call cycle menus, and we know that we get certain foods through Cisco and through USDA commodities. And so knowing what foods are going to be coming in, I can uh, plan the menus according to that. And, of course, through a fresh fruits and vegetables program, we can also bring, bring in more, more pro produce for them. Okay. And then on Thursdays, you have something special. We do, which actually we changed it oh. to Wednesdays. Okay. Yes, Wednesday. we changed it to Wednesdays. We get free ice cream donated by our, our Dairy Museum. Okay, Dairy. Southwest Dairy Museum mm -hmm. people. Southwest Dairy Museum, yes. They love making sure people oh gosh, yes. have plenty of ice cream in the Oh, summer. yes. They are excited. Are we have ice cream today? Do we, do we have ice cream today? So, yes. <laughs> the children love it. Yeah. So, I know the kids like it, and you're on that subject, and so let me ask about that. How do you know that they like what they're getting, that they eat? everything on their plate well they will tell you okay <laughs> they will tell you are we having this again can we have this I mean they will say what they want but I'm glad you asked that because one of our new regulations and one of our new policies is we have to we our personnel me have to go out into the district and do food sampling so this next school year I will be able to get surveys on students on what they like and what they don't like and be able to bring new items in and take out what they don't like. Okay. Yeah. So what are favorite lunch Pizza, items? Pizza, chicken nuggets, steak finger patties, uh, steak fingers, and um, nachos. So those are kind of the favorite items that they like. And spaghetti is not always a big hit. There are some that do, but that's not always a big hit. So maybe the mashed potatoes and the green beans, yes. they do like that? Mm -hmm. Yes. When we have that menu of chicken nuggets, mashed potatoes and gravy, green beans, and pineapple tidbits, yes, that's a big hit. That's a big day. Good. I'm glad to hear that they're eating their fruits and vegetables. Yes. And, you know, this in the summertime, we're able to provide other fruits. We're, we provide uh, watermelon. Kids love it. Mm -hmm. They love the watermelon, the fresh fruits and vegetables coming in. Good. That's mm -hmm. good to know. And so once again, and I was, as a grandparent, my youngsters came to visit, and I wanted to maybe take them, but I wasn't sure. And I wasn't sure which door we'd go in, and I wasn't sure if I could leave them for just a half hour or whatever. You can you can drop your students off. You can drop your children off. Of course, you know if you have small children, you don't want to leave them in there. But if they're of school age, they can come in there and eat their breakfast, and then just wait until you come back. I wouldn't recommend them leaving there because again, we call it's just serve from 7:45 to 8:30. So and then they would need to be picked up, and if they're not within the YMCA program or the summer school program, they would need to be picked up. Well, and if a parent did drop off the children then need to just they'll sit in the dining room that's correct until they're picked up yes okay and do we go to the i'd say the north or south entrances by the gym doors by the gym doors okay <laughs> yes. on that parking lot over yes. there to the, yes. to the north side well it's a wonderful program it is it is. I'm, I'm excited about it. Again, our numbers have been up this summer, and our, our, our goal is to feed our children that are, you know, home if home for um, school, that are that are just, you know, lounging around, come eat lunch with us, come eat breakfast with us. So, yes. I would guess that maybe you have some that maybe walk in from the neighborhood they around. They do, absolutely. And so we have approximately 140 students from summer school and YMCA. And so some days they don't all come, you know, whether they're on vacation or they're just taking a day off from whatever they're doing. But we have students and children that come in just directly off the street, off the neighborhood. And, and come eat with us. So it is a valuable service. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for sharing it with us, and uh, congratulations on your new position Thank with you very Silver much. Springs ISD. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Veronica Arnold, for coming in today. Here's Don with sports. The newness and the shine have worn off of the edge conditioning program as it completed its second week Thursday morning. Wildcats offensive coordinator Matt Young admitted that 
participants are hitting the grind now. He admitted that coaches detected a little bit of a dead point earlier this week. Coach Young said it was addressed and the athletes responded. He said sessions Wednesday and Thursday were fantastic. Attendance also dipped this week. Coach Young said kids were missing for girls and boys basketball camps, a church mission trip, and some vacations. On Thursday, Coach Young said attitudes were tremendous as athletes pushed sleds, did agility drills involving hurdles, and ended things up by running downhill races at Buford Park. At the end of the session, Coach Young said the athletes were challenged to continue to show up and do what it takes to finish the program. He said some of the athletes have made strides. He jokingly said guys were wearing more sleeveless t-shirts. Coach Young also said this year's Edge featured perhaps the best group of girls ever. Middle School Edge will run for one more week, while High School Edge will go on for another four weeks. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening.